Hey folks, Matt Easton of Scholar Gladiatoria and also of Eastern Antique Arms. As many of you know, I, uh, as a hobby, buy and sell antique swords so that I can augment my own collection. Um, and every now and again I take receipt of something which I think, you know, my video viewers will probably like to see this. And this is a fairly unusual thing. And it is an Austrian cavalry sabre from the middle of the 19th century. I believe that this is the 1858 pattern. And uh, it's a it's a really nice sword, I have to say. I I have handled, I think, the slightly later, the 1860s version of this before, but I've never handled one of these before. And I've got to say, this is a freaking beast of a sabre. Uh, anybody who thinks that 19th century sabres are in some, ha in some way less kind of uh, brutal or kind of chunky or uh, powerful uh, compared to medieval swords or Japanese swords or whatever you think are, are awesome and powerful, you should hold one of these things. Man, this is a beast. Um, I mean, the, the breadth of this blade is the equal of most medieval arming swords um, and side swords, in fact, wider than most side swords. Um, it has been service sharpened as well, it's got a nice edge on it. Um, but you might have already noticed, just looking at as I'm holding it, the really unusual thing about this sword is the blade. Now I'll talk about that in a minute. Now let's have a little look at the hilt for a second. So there are a few things I really, really like about this hilt, okay? Uh, first up, the fact that the hilt is symmetrical, okay? So you can see it's, it's not particularly wide, it's actually narrower than most British uh, heavy cavalry swords of the period um, and later universal cavalry swords, British ones. Um, but it is symmetrical, which is obviously good if you're a left-hander. Um, it's symmetrical and it offers a really good level of protection. The reason that we have piercings, we have holes in these um, uh, kind of guards and, and stuff. You, I've had been asked this question, why do people put kind of holes in these guards? Well, the very simple reason is if you make it of one sheet and you make it thick, it's going to be quite heavy. So you have a kind of trade-off. You either make a guard which is a sheet but is made of relatively thin metal and therefore gets dented fairly easily, particularly on the edges, or you make it thicker, in other words, it's pretty much, it'd be pretty much impossible to dent this except without like a pole axe or a sledgehammer or something, um, you make it thicker and then you pierce it with holes so the weight is equivalent. Um, this, they've obviously taken the stance of making a thick guard, it is certainly a thick guard, and not only that, but they have reinforced, if I move closer it might focus, there we go, you've reinforced the edges around here, really, really nicely made guard, I really like it. It has a back strap, that's the piece of metal that comes from the pommel cap, as it's called, down the back and slides into the ferrule at the base of the grip there, so it's all sandwiched really tight together. But this sword also has uh, lateral um, ears, um, what else could we call it? They're usually called ears, ears of the back strap, and there's a rivet going through there. So this hilt is very securely, in fact, pretty much indestructibly securely attached to the tang of this sword. It has a peen at the, what's called a peen at the end, essentially a rivet at the end, and then it has another rivet going laterally through the tang. And um, another thing I'll say about this hilt as well is it's um, kind of squared off. I don't know how much you'll be able to see that. Can you see it has a flat surface there? So it's quite rectangular. Now, I love rectangular grips. If you look at a fencing foil, particularly at 19th century fencing foils, you'll notice with those type of swords they're often square or maybe a bit re rectangular. This gives you really good kind of directional sense of where your edges are pointing in. And with a cutting sword, it really, really assists um, leading with the edge, as they called it. In other words, hitting with the edge and not with the edge twisted at all so that you're going to you know, give a bad cut. Now moving to the blade, which is really what characterises these Austrian swords. I know that the later Austrian swords, some of them had this on as well. I'm by no uh, no stretch of the imagination an expert on Austrian uh, military weapons or Austro-Hungarian military weapons. Um, I, I've only handled a few actually in my time. We don't see an awful lot of them in Britain. But what characterises it is, it looks like a normal blade on this side. It's fairly broad, it has to be said. Not particularly long. It's only 33 inches, which is relatively short for a cavalry sword, or it's kind of at the shorter end of the spectrum um, but it's normal in that it's fullered on this side and flat on that side why did they make it like that I have absolutely no idea I'm afraid um, 
it was obviously a design decision they they made. It was a, a, a they believed a, a balance of getting a blade that was both um, light and stiff, perhaps. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but it's a very interesting design choice, and I actually really, really like it. I've got to say, I like flat-bladed swords like cutlasses, um, although in a way they're more basic and more simple. I actually just really, really like the aesthetic of them. Um, so I've got, you can't see them because they're behind the camera, but I've got various cutlasses lit littered around which are uh, flat-bladed, and I like those. Um, so there we go, the Austrian 1858 cavalry sword, and really what characterises it is this beefy blade, not particularly long, but beefy slashing blade that is flat on one side and fullered on the other. Really unusual thing. And I've got to say, this is a damn nice sword. Well done, Austria. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.